A lot of people who watch this channel seem to be of the opinion that I favor Nike products. But what if I told you that there was a time when Nike actually banned me? In fact, I still might actually be banned. I'm not really sure. So this story begins in 2007, where 14 year old me got his first pair of high-end mercurials. They were the new Mercurial Vapor 4 in the alternate launch colorway, not the orange ones, but the purple ones. And I was super stoked on them, even though they gave me horrible blisters. After a month of pretty terrible discomfort, the boots started to feel okay. And I was actually really happy with them, wearing them for the next several months until it got to a point where the boots started to smell. And this is a story that I have told on the channel before. The boots started to smell like cat pee and we had cats at the time we even had a dog and I kind of assumed that one of them peed in my boots which they had never done before so I thought it was a little bit weird eventually I would find out online that there was actually some kind of a natural material in the upper that once it got wet it would actually rot and it would smell just like cat pee through a little bit more research I also found out that Nike actually had a warranty program so if you had a problem with your boots you could actually send them into Nike warranty and they would replace them 100% for free and this whole cat urine smell issue that you could not get rid of no matter what was actually under recall from Nike so you could send them in and they would send you a brand new pair which is exactly what I did. Now I'm not sure specifically how they do warranty claims now because I haven't actually done one in a very long time but back in the day you google search Nike warranty for your specific country in my case it was Canada there was a phone number that you could call you would let them know what was happening they would give you a warranty claim number and you would basically send in your boots with that claim number it would take a week or two for them to go over your claim and they would either deny or approve it. Most of the time they would approve it though. It seemed like they were pretty easy going when it came to that kind of thing. And sure enough, I sent in my Cat P Vapors and I got back a brand new pair of Vapor 4s in the new Citroen colorway, 100% for free. Which leads us into another story that I've told on the channel before. The time I got my dream pair of Mercurial Vapor 4 SLs that I ended up breaking in the exact same day. It was very common for the carbon fiber sole plates to crack and mine did just that. 14 year old me was obviously very upset about this situation but knew in the back of his head he could send them back to Nike and they would replace them for free so that's exactly what I did called their warranty service got a claim number and sent them into Nike and sure enough they got approved but instead of getting a new pair in the mail I got a phone call letting me know that in fact they have approved my warranty claim but they don't actually have any Vapor 4 SLs to send out, which meant that I had to pick something else of equal or lesser value. And that's just how the Nike warranty service worked in Canada, at least at that particular time. I believe it's a little bit different now and kind of being fed up with Mercurials at this point, fed up with the discomfort, fed up with them breaking. I figured I would go for something different. The Nike T90 Laser 2 had just come out. So I decided to go for some T90 Laser 2s in the kangaroo leather upper variation. Now these were boots that I really enjoyed. They go down as one of my all time favorites, even though it's a very flawed, bulky, chunky boot in a lot of ways, but I really, really like them. And they lasted me for a good two months, I wanna say, until out of the blue, one of the studs on the bottom completely ripped off which was also a fairly common issue with the T90 Laser 2. So as I had done twice already in the span of about four months, I called Nike's warranty claim service to get a replacement pair. And as much as I liked the T90 Laser 2s and could have got another pair totally for free, I decided I would try something different. So I had them send me a pair of Nike Tiempo Legend 2s. Looking back at a lot of the high-end boots that I had as a kid, the Tiempo Legend 2s were actually some of the best that I didn't really, I think, value as much at the time, mainly because they were a little bit more on the boring side. The main reason why I went for them in the first place is because I really wanted something with a kangaroo leather upper like my T90 Lasers had, but I figured maybe the Tiempos would be a little bit more durable. To my surprise, they broke after a month, the sole separating from the upper. So this has to be the most predictable story ever. I called Nike's warranty service and got a claim number for my broken Tiempos, sent them in, and to my surprise, about two weeks later, I got them back in the mail. The same broken boots that I sent into Nike, they they sent me right back denying my claim. And there was no explanation either, just a box with my broken boots that I thought were gonna be replaced 100% for free as Nike had done three times already. So right away I got on the phone with Nike's warranty service and found out that they had actually banned me from making any more warranty claims. And I don't necessarily blame them because in a span of about eight months I had made four warranty claims, but 
At the same time, all of the boots that I broke legitimately broke from just regular use, so it wasn't necessarily my fault, but they were under the impression that I was perhaps tampering with the boots, breaking them myself, just so I could get a new pair every couple of months. Which to be clear, I was not doing. Now let's keep in mind that back in 2007, 2008, right around the time when this happened, things were a lot less advanced than they are now. And I'm going to assume the system that they used for warranty claims was a lot more simple than what they use now. So I had the idea that, hey, I'm gonna send these boots in again. I'm gonna call and get another warranty claim because you didn't need a proof of purchase at that time, which I think you do now. Um, and I sent them in again, but under a different name. I used my dog's name and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> which tells me that the only information they were keeping in their system were names for warranty claims. If you used a different name, which was my dog's name with the exact same last name at the same exact mailing address, they didn't seem to catch on to that and my warranty claim was approved. So from that day forward, and I think I only ever made maybe two or three more claims from that point over a span of a couple years because I started to wear other boots outside of Nike. Every time I would send in a warranty claim, I would use a different name. And I guess I should just add this in as a side note because I did have a backup pair at the time when all of these boots were breaking and that pair was an Adidas Predator Absolute that were absolutely indestructible. I had them in my bag at all times and that's pretty much what I wore in between all of these broken boots being shipped back to Nike and the new pairs being sent back. And that's the story of how I got banned from using Nike's warranty claim service. I'm not sure to this day if I'm still banned because I never actually made another claim under my actual name. Luckily these days I have plenty of different names to use so I'll probably never find out the answer to that question. But this was a funny story. I don't think I've ever told it on the channel so I figured you guys guys would enjoy it. Speaking of which, if you guys did enjoy this video and perhaps would like to see more story videos like this, please support this one with a like. Also, if you're new here watching for the first time and don't want to miss out on daily football boot content from me, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. If you have any questions or any funny stories of your own regarding any kind of warranty claim services, leave it down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. All of my social media information is also linked down below, so follow me there if you don't already. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.